Thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity to speak before you this evening. One question which had come up obviously towards me very much during the California campaign is, as you can imagine, how in the world did I get involved in this issue? In other words, it seems I speak English perfectly well. Why in the world would I have gotten involved in this issue to begin with? And the answer to that is that I actually come from a little bit of an immigrant background myself, in that my mother was born in Los Angeles, but she grew up not speaking a word of English. Then when she was a young child, about four or five years old, she learned English very quickly and easily. And for that reason, when I'd first heard about these bilingual programs, back when I was in junior high, they never really seemed to make any sense to me. In other words, why didn't the school simply teach English to these children as soon as they began school, rather than keeping them in these other programs, sometimes for many years? The programs never made any sense to me or any sense to any of my parents, any of my friends. And that was true in junior high, that was true when I was in high school, when I was in college, when I was in graduate school, during all those years. And according to all the news reports I'd been reading, those programs didn't really seem to work very well. When something doesn't seem to make much sense and it doesn't seem to work very well, you assume it probably will gradually go away. But instead, over that 10 or 20 or 25 year period, it grew dramatically in size. Then, in 1996, when I was living in California, I read a series of articles in the Los Angeles Times about a group of immigrant Latino parents in downtown Los Angeles, very poor garment workers, who actually had to begin a public boycott of their own local elementary school because it refused to teach the children English. Now, when things had reached the point where parents had to carry picket signs outside a public school because it refused to allow their children to learn English, I felt something finally had to be done about it. So I ended up researching the issue of bilingual education much more thoroughly as practiced in California and found some absolutely horrifying statistics. The official data from California at that time, coming from the State Office of Bilingual Instruction, showed that a quarter of all the children in California public schools didn't know English. A quarter of the entire total, 1.5 million students. And of the students who didn't know English, each year only five or six percent allegedly learned English. In other words, 95 percent of all the students in California who started a school year classified as not knowing English ended that school year still classified as not having learned English. And any program that seems to have an official 95 percent annual failure rate I think is a program that something had to be done about. So I organized an effort to put a measure on the ballot to shift the state of California away from these native language oriented so-called bilingual education programs towards a simple and effective system of intensive sheltered English immersion. The idea behind it is extremely simple. When young children start school not knowing English, they would normally be placed in a special classroom with the other children who are also learning English to teach them English as quickly as possible over a period of a few months or possibly a year or possibly even longer than a year. Once they learned English, then they would be moved into the regular classrooms with all the other students. It seemed to make a lot of sense to me and it also made a lot of sense to the voters of California. The campaign we had was probably the most bipartisan initiative campaign in the history of California in that it was opposed by nearly all the Democrats and all the Republicans. It was opposed by the chairman of the state Republican Party and the chairman of the state Democratic Party. It was opposed by President Bill Clinton. It was opposed by all four candidates for governor, Democrat and Republican. It was opposed by nearly every union, nearly every educational organization, nearly all the newspapers in the state and all the political slates. We were also outspent on advertising by a ratio of 25 to one. The other side spent 25 times more money in advertising than we did. Nonetheless, we won in a huge landslide, one of the biggest landslides of any contested initiative campaign in the history of California. And once the political dust had settled, and our initiative had been ruled absolutely constitutional by four separate federal judges in a matter of a few weeks, then the reporters started going into the classroom at the beginning of the new school year and seeing the impact of this allegedly disastrous, catastrophic measure which would sweep away a program which had supposedly been so successful. And the results were quite interesting. Virtually every single article which has come out now in California in the last three or four years by these reporters, nearly all of whose newspapers had originally opposed the initiative, has been extremely complimentary, almost flattering. 
the, these bilingual teachers, or rather ex-bilingual teachers, ex-bilingual administrators, in many cases are saying, we oppose the measure every step of the way, we thought it would be a disaster, but it's working incredibly well. The children are learning English so much more quickly than we ever imagined. That went on for a period of time, and then the test scores start coming in. Now, my point of view of it is that the proof of the pudding of any public policy measure is in the eating. Test scores are a way to see whether something works or something doesn't work. And in the state of California, what we've seen over the last few years is perhaps the most dramatic single rise in academic performance by a large group of students, the immigrant students of California, recorded almost anywhere in the country. What we have seen is that in less than two years after the implementation of the new initiative, the average mean percentile test scores of over a million immigrant students went up by 40%. And that 40% rise included those school districts in the state of California that dragged their heels on implementing the initiative, that tried to keep their bilingual programs. Those that most completely got rid of their bilingual programs were able to double their test scores in less than two years. And in fact, this last year, the test scores of California's immigrant students, again, rose more than qu twice as quickly as the test scores of the non-immigrant students. And I think that is the sort of thing that should be done in Massachusetts as well. Now, the interesting thing about it is, when I was laying the groundwork for the campaign, when I was moving forward with the effort, I did what I consider a lot of due diligence on the issue. I talked with some of America's leading advocates of bilingual education, as well as many of the critics. And the statements these supporters made of the program were really fascinating. Virtually none of them, and that includes organizations, academics, activists, individuals, virtually none of the supporters of bilingual education would defend the program as existed, as it was practiced. They all made excuses for the fact that the program was such a dismal failure. They would say the program admittedly works very badly in these different states, in these different cities. We in no way will defend this program as practiced in California. But they said the problem is not the theory, but the practice. The problem is that the program does not have enough teachers, does not have the right teachers, does not have enough money, does not have the correct curriculum, does not have ad must, does enough administrative support. That, they said, is the problem. In theory, it works. It just has problems in practice. So I asked them then, can you point to any large-scale example anywhere in the United States where bilingual education has actually worked well? And they couldn't think of a single one. Now, I'm a theoretical physicist by training, as was mentioned in the introduction. In science, in physics, there's a huge difference between theory and experiment. If you have a theory, a theory even backed by leading Harvard University professors, that says that something would work, but if you've tried it over and over and over again throughout the entire United States for a period of 30 years, and it's never actually worked once in practice on a large scale, I say the rules of science are that you throw away the theory. You disregard these theories, you admit the theories are wrong, and you switch to something that does work. In less than, in about a year's time, the people of Massachusetts will have a chance to junk this failed theory of bilingual education, which has never worked anywhere on a large scale in the United States of America, and switch to something that does work, which is intensive English immersion, and will double the test scores of Massachusetts immigrant students, as it is currently doing for over a million immigrant students in California. Thank you very much.